I had actually seen Joe once before, and that was a party. I don't remember whose house. I think it must have been. I seem to remember the place it was in the village, which is around the area of Kenward's house. So it might have actually been at Kenward's. And this would have been in the 70s, I think. And I remember that Joe had a lot of hair. Uh, I mean, afroish hair, and um, had little s silk scarves on, very brightly covered silk scarf. I mean, he really was dressed a little bit of the period in that kind of look that you see in your high school yearbook, and you think, oh, God, did I do that? Then, when I met him again in 1979, um, he, I saw him, and the things I noticed right away was his open shirt, um, he was smoking True Blues, which he was a cigarette he always smoked or was always trying to give up. Um, I thought he was really handsome, and I was so intrigued by the way he spoke, which was stuttering, stuttered a little bit, and he, it seemed hard for him sometimes to get the word words out. And somehow when somebody speaks like that, it, or it did for me, it gave me sort of an opportunity to like rest and not try to fill in words and uh, it made me slow down in listening. Saying all that, there was also this um, undercurrent of attraction uh, that we both felt then. He was very complimentary about having seen me in the play. Um, and. Uh, so then I told a friend that I, I thought he was great. A friend told Joe. We um, started writing to each other. And I remember he said, uh, your address has been, has been um, burning a hole in my er, pocket. Uh, you know, Joe would always, he typed on, or um, wrote in capital letters on line paper. And um, he was so excited uh, about writing. It was, it was very romantic, very, quite long. Um, and uh, it started a long, epistolatory uh, romance. Um, i trying to think what else he might have said. I don't think that letter had enclosures in it. So many of his letters did have enclosures in them. Uh, it's a paper or uh, something he'd find or a flower or a flower that had been pressed, um, stuff like that. You know, I'm thinking back then I was a young, ambitious actor. I was probably uh, telling him a lot about myself, what I was doing. Uh, he, when he would ever talk about himself, I mean, I think it would always begin with, well, I'm no prize. Um, he would describe very simply uh, his, what he was doing in Vermont. He would uh, usually start a letter with saying, I've oiled up with suntan lotion, I'm wearing my Speedo, I'm out by the lake, I've got my cigarettes beside me. You know, it got into the minutia of uh, details. Um, thinking back on it, it's not un James Schuyler like who, you know, pays such beautiful attention to the here and now of the natural I saw some, some stories that he told me in my letters that sort of became stories in his writing. One in particular I remember was about a bird that he'd seen uh, flying into a barn and died, I think, before he had uh, found the nest and had been watching the bird and then it flew into the wall of the side of the barn. Um, so I would be writing to him about stuff that was going on with me, and then gradually we get uh, more romantic, and then, you know, outright raunchy, but, um, or sexy, or whatever word you use, but Joe's type of raunchy, which was, let's see, he said one time to me, he said, oh, I had an erotic dream about you. I dreamt that uh, 
you were taking a shower and I came in and joined you and I poured uh, violet pastels down your throat which were very handily nearby and then I started coming all over you <laughs> so in a way I mean I there's uh, an erotic element of course but there's also it was always this visual uh, element and beauty to his writing and his letters and um, over the course of time, and this is before we really had a first date, uh, we got we got very serious in the letters. So this was a piece that appeared in a letter to me, um, and then appeared in Joe's writing. I might also add, I'm not saying that it came necessarily from my letter into Joe's writing, because I think Joe wrote a lot of letters, and so I think this, he sort of formed it in writing this same thing to quite a few of his friends. And it, here it is. A thrilling and tragic thing happened this morning on the front porch where some sparrows built a nest under the eave to lay their eggs in, which hatched into babies that kept getting bigger and bigger until finally this morning, right in front of my very eyes, they just got up and flew the coop as though there was nothing to it or as though they'd been sneaking out at night, secretly rehearsing behind our human backs. And so, as though by some prearranged signal, like, one, two, three, go, they got up and went, fanning themselves out, each into a different direction, each into a life of its own, all except for one, that is, who flew right under the side of the house with a tiny thud and alas, is of this particular world no more. Joe and I never lived together, except for one brief period. And um, I was always between apartments. So we could have easily lived together because I could have moved in with him. But I think we were both uh, cautious about that. But one time we decided to try it. Um, and uh, between apartments, I think we may, may have even said, oh, this is just for a short time, um, and it was. Uh, I moved in for about two weeks, and stupidly, we picked that time as the right time to give up smoking, too. Joe, during his days in his apartment, paced. He would pace up and down, uh, around the floor, uh, walking around, and I usually uh, spend all my time riding around on a bicycle and sort of creating errands for myself that I needed to go do, pick up scripts, do this, do that, because uh, I was really active. I tried to be less active so it wouldn't seem like I was trying to escape. Joe was self-conscious while I was there about his pacing which was his way of sort of building, igniting his creativity sometimes. Uh, we started to get on each other's nerves a little bit, in a very loving way, but in each other's nerves. And we had bought this uh, really dumb turntable uh, record player. I mean, a real basic one, like a teenage girl carries around in high school in 1950. Um, and uh, it was, uh, we were playing a Patsy Cline, and uh, Patsy Cline's um, uh, song, uh, 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 what the fuck is that song? Uh, Feeling and thinking that my love would hold you. That's the one. Became our song, and one time it was on, and Joe was sort of pacing around, and he went over to this sweet little record player, and he wore cowboy boots a lot, he put his heel through the record and through the record player. And we refer to that ever after as the time he turned the record player off with his foot. I spoke about Joe to this group called the Wild Boys, which is this uh, group of poets who meet and have these salons. They're really wonderful and they do uh, um, a poet uh, choose one poet and they read the works and then they meet and talk about him and they 
have people, invite people to talk about the poet. And they were, did an evening of Joe Brainerd, and they asked me to come speak. And um, the, uh, somebody asked me at the end, uh, uh, how did Joe influence your view of art or something? Or what was something, uh, how did he change you or as a person? I can't quite remember the question, but I couldn't come up with an answer then. But afterwards, I thought one of the uh, things that Joe taught me was uh, a real love of um, modesty in art, uh, of someone who is like he was himself, who uh, wasn't trying to put himself in the forefront, a sort of, it was the opposite of look at me, you know, sort of, uh, um, I'm trying to think who has that quality. Agnes Marden. These simple lines is like very much like that. He also said to me once we were looking at something uh, in a uh, window of a gallery and it was sort of crude and shocking. Uh, I remember lots of brown abstract sort of thing. Uh, and I said, do you like that? He said, well, he said, I think it's really good, he said. And um, I think uh, art, great art, doesn't have to be beautiful. He said, just, but my own taste is, I really like beautiful things. And that was true. Uh, I realized that uh, that is true. Um, and I sort of feel the same way now. I am drawn to more beautiful things. I know there's really great ugly things, <laughs> but um, I sort of have uh, uh, drawn to Joe's philosophy, or maybe we both shared that philosophy all along and that's what drew us to each other. He hated becoming a caricature of himself, and sometimes he would feel like that and um, do something to break that pattern. Um, Often it was just not go out or not socialize, but I remember reading something he did which was throw his glasses, because he always wore glasses and he had these big uh, frame glasses. And I remember reading that he threw his glasses off the Staten Island Ferry, I think. And then of course, a moment after, realized, well, this is awful, I can't see a fucking thing. But, but he, didn't, he hated being a caricature of himself.